Today we're going over my settings in Rainbow Six Siege, aka the best professional Rainbow Six player settings that you can possibly get. Now, my settings are mainly focused on having really good frames while also having a little bit of quality. I don't want my game to look like a freaking naked piece of paper with scribbles on it. I want my game to look relatively nice, but also save a little tear and wear and sucky sucky on my PC. You know what I'm saying? So we're just going to go through each category, talk about the settings, and talk about specifically some of the most important things that you should change along the way, because there are a few settings in here that are sneaky little guys that you'll want to make sure are off or on depending on what it is let's start with the general and the general settings honestly there's a few things in here you might want to take note of firstly is your performance metrics if you want your metrics on to see how many frames you're actually getting you can turn that on these are pc settings i am a pc player so that's what you're going to get today uh, but i'll also show my controller sense and stuff if you're interested now for your cycle inside camera groups you can have this on but i prefer to have it off that way when you cycle off of a camera it'll just jump right to the next group and won't circle you back through the cams that way you don't have to do multiple different button presses so i think this one off is nice but that's preference a lot of this stuff is preference so whatever you prefer uh and then we have the diffuser pick up on both that way it can not only grab the diffuser so if i'm at range i can actually pick it up if it's like sticking around a corner but then i can also walk over to pick it up i think this is the best way to do this you definitely want both on for the throw trajectory this is the new trajectory system i think this is absolutely amazing i'm going to be keeping this on but you can turn it off if you really hate it drone after prep is a very important one i have this on manual that way you can sit on a drone for your teammate and hold it there without missing anything like let's say if you have this on automatic then what's going to happen is going to automatically kick you off the drone when the round starts and then somebody could technically cross your drone at that same second making it so you don't actually see them cross so manual is just more ideal uh, and you eventually build the habit of hopping off of it anyway match replays on that way you can go back into the match replay and actually watch your games back this is a great way to learn and improve i would recommend having it on as well but if you're never going to look at it you could turn it off because that will also save the replay files to your pc but it only does maximum of 10 i believe so it's not a big deal i actually recommend turning your text to team chat only that way you're not distracted by the other team if you're on console you don't have to worry about it moving on to the hud i have this very very straightforward i have everything as normal but then i turn one thing off and that is the gameplay warnings those are the little info alerts that pop up i think they're annoying as hell and you don't need them so turn them off if you also find that they're annoying that's like if you're scanning on a drone and there's no one in the area and it says oh there's nobody to scan it's like i know I, i'm scanning them you're just not picking it up game you know what i'm saying sometimes the game's a little silly next up is the audio settings now i use the sennheiser 3.0 cx something earbuds i really love the earbuds i can hear absolutely everything in them i use hi-fi but a lot of people use night mode you have to try to test that out yourself and see what you prefer some people say they can hear the footsteps better on night mode i personally think i can hear them better in the hi-fi so that's what i run you know that's what i think i turn my music off because i think it's annoying that's all and then i have my microphone on my input device that's where people are hearing you from sometimes people will have this accidentally on like their webcam so you want to make sure that's actually set to your microphone if you have a standalone mic and then of course your headphones for the output for the display settings i am using a zowie benq xl lcd monitor uh it's a 25 60 by 1440 so that's the resolution i have it on now some people will still play on the 1080 but i recommend just using whatever resolution your monitor actually is just so it's actually syncs up a little better i find i find on the on the 1080 it just it just looks a little rough um and then i have a 144 hertz monitor so default this will be 60 make sure you actually turn that up if your monitor is a higher amount of hertz uh and then you play on full screen aspect ratio is a big one this is one i just switched in the new season and that is because acogs are back and before I was rocking the 3.2. I was 3.2 for a very long time when the 1.5s came out. But now that the ACOGs are back, I'm on back on the 16.10 because I'm running ACOG on practically everything. And 3.2 is just a little too extra zoom. I find 16.10 is perfect. 16.9 is the default. This is what you would be if you're on console. Uh, but I think 16.10 is just the perfect aspect ratio for the new season. Now, if you are completely against the ACOGs and only using one-time sites, then firstly, you're a baller. Secondly, I might hit the 4.3 in that case. I know that's something like Shiko does. Does, uh, but that's really up to you for the fps limit you could match this to match your hertz of your monitor but i just leave it off it's not a big deal it's not really hurting anything i just leave it off because i'm always rocking like a million fps with my ultimate gamer settings my fov is 83 i think it's nice and wide i think 90 might be just a little too wide for me so i have it at 83 
Uh, and somebody told me to put it there one time and I listened to them and I've loved it ever since. My HUD display size is a little bit smaller just so I can actually look up and see the operators and stuff a little easier. I don't like when it's right glued to the top. I think this was a great thing that they actually added to the settings. I'm really glad they put this in. Uh, and then my menu display area, we can even make it smaller if we want or just put it back to where, I don't even know what is it, what was it at, 95? Yeah, put it back to 95. It, that one doesn't really matter. My brightness is at 55 if you care. I don't know. I mean, you also have your monitor brightness which is different from your actual in-game brightness. So that might vary depending on how bright your monitor is. But yeah, that's the display. Next up, we have the graphics settings. This is where we're really gonna wanna lock in because it's how we're gonna save on the FPS while making our game look fairly nice overall. First, we have the NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, and I have this on with the boost just because I have a very powerful GPU, and I'm not using it, as you can see at the bottom, to its max. So this will just help me pull more power from my GPU rather than my CPU while I'm playing should help with latency and be nice. So I use it. I think, I think that's right. If I'm wrong, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Next up, we have the texture quality. This is probably the biggest one in terms of how things will actually look. Usually I just keep it on medium, but because my GPU is like a 4080, it's like very new, very nice. I have it on high just to get a little more quality out of the game. You could put this on low and still make the game look okay. Uh, I just have it on high because I'm a little picky and I have the luxury of being able to do that. Next up, we have the texture filtering. I have this all the way up. It doesn't draw too much power on your system, but it also takes away a lot of the blur on things, especially when you're looking around at weird angles. So it's, uh, it's a nice thing that I think is one of the main things that makes the game look a little better. So I have it all the way up. You don't have to. You could put it on linear. It just looks a little more blurry. I guess. For everything else, I pretty much have it on medium. The big one to point out here is shadow quality, because if you have shadows on low, you won't actually see shadows, but having it on medium will show you the shadows on the map, which are actually very important because you can see when people are coming around corners before they do in some sort of situations, and it's definitely worth having on medium. If you're going to put everything to low on this list, at least turn your shadows to medium. The next key detail here is the lens effects, because if you have lens effects on bloom and lens flare, you are going to be blind by the sun on villa you'll also be blinded by other things it's just not great it does make lesions like halloween headgear look cool which is nice but having it off overall is better for actual gameplay and to have the advantage in situations where the blue might completely screw you over zoom in depth of field is also very important you want to make sure this is off because what this does is when you're zooming in and aiming down your sights it'll blur everything else that isn't in your sights so turn it off so that you can still have some peripheral vision while you're aiming i think this needs to be off if you have it on maybe it lets you focus a little better i don't know maybe it'll let you lock in you can play around with it for sure but i would definitely recommend having it off for the nvidia deep learning super sampling i actually had no idea this even existed which is why i'm just gonna say keep it off because it sounds insane and it sounds like this is if you have like an 8k monitor or some like crazy monitor and you want some like crazy graphics it's only built for nvidia gpus too so i don't know I, it's obviously not necessary if i've been going this long without it the amd fidelity effects stuff I have those off as well. Also have never seen these before. I have no idea what they do. Can play around with them if you want. And again, a lot of this stuff depends on your actual system. Try to think for yourself and say, hey, should I actually run this or should I turn it off and try stuff out and have fun? You know, I know this is supposed to be a settings video to give you tips, but there's also, it also depends because there is so many different people with different systems watching it at the same time. I have TAA on with the adaptive render scaling target FPS at zero. For my render scaling, I have it at hundred. This makes sure my game actually renders at that 2560 by 1440. If you turn it all the way down, as you can see here, it's only rendering at 1280 by 720. So it looks way worse. But then again, it also lowers uh, your, your frame rate or sorry, improves your frame rate by lowering the resolution. So the lower resolution can increase your frame rate. So you actually get more FPS at that lower res. But this is really one of the things that's really going to tank how good your game looks. For the sharpness, I have it up to 60. It just kind of gets rid of some of that blur. I think this is the perfect number to have it at. I've tried a little bit higher, tried a little bit lower. I think 60 is just a nice clean amount of sharpness. Moving on to my controls. Now, this is where it gets interesting because we have the Pox multiplier. Oh, we're on my desktop. What do you know? Okay, we're on my desktop because this is how you actually change your multiplier in game, your in game multiplier. Now, of course, you can only do this on PC. So you go to your documents, you go to my games, Rainbow Six Siege, you click on whichever profile is yours. Mine happens to be this one. So once you get to game settings, if you scroll down, you can see your ADS mul mouse multiplier unit this by default will be set to 0.02 but i have mine at 
0.005301. So mine's about a quarter of the default multiplier. Uh, and that's how you change it. You just change in there, you save it, and you go back into the game, you boot it up, and your mouse multiplier will be different. So because of that, I have my 88 mouse sensitivity. This is default, but then it's the ADS sensitivity that has the multiplier on it. So now I can have my one time site at 90 and my 2.5 time site at 160. So my actual sense with the default multiplier would be around 20. 4, 23, and then whatever a quarter of 6, 160 is. I guess about 40. Four, so 41. So it'd be about 24 and 41 because it is a little bit over a quarter. So that's my sensitivity. If you want to copy it, there you go. Pox Unlock Sense, get active. I love it. It's definitely a higher on ADS sense as it would be to ADS. So I can spin around really quick while I'm on ADS. And then when I ADS, it gets much more precise and much slower. I have my mouse scroll wheel disabled because a lot of time the mouse wheel will get kind of stuck. Uh, and instead I use X to switch my weapons. So I actually have a keybind to switch guns. Either that or I'll use the number keys like one, two, one and two to switch between weapons. Gadget deployment goes to advanced. Now what this means is you can actually start placing something and stop halfway through. Just put it on. It just makes sense. Uh, you can die a lot placing gadgets. It's better if you are able to come off of it. And with the drone deployment, also have that on advanced. That way you can throw down a drone without automatically getting on it. And then you can kind of bait people with the drone. You can wait a second before you actually hop on to see if anyone's gonna hop out it's just a safer way to drone and if it's a little overwhelming maybe just do one at a time so you can get used to it one at a time i might lean on toggle aim on hold sprint on hold crouch on toggle prone on toggle walk on hold nothing too crazy and then for my controls i'll just kind of slowly scroll through it my controls are a little strange i use u and i for my chats so i don't accidentally hit them uh i have lean on q and e that's pretty default and then i have my crouch on mouse and i prone with control that's default i walk with c that's the weird one so instead of crouching with c i walk with c and then i have crouch on my mouse and then uh, my melee is g instead of grenade because grenade is also on my mouse so my grenade is my front mouse button that way i can kind of hold c4s and lean and move at the same time and be more accurate with my gadgets i just that was something i picked up when i first started and i've used it ever since uh and besides that all my controls are default except for weapon swap and drop diffuser and then switch abilities on b which i just hit with my thumb and then for my controller sensitivity i actually play on 2060 on xbox now and my xbox sense is not the best but i think i have it actually like this on xbox i don't know i don't play with the controller very much and my aim on xbox is <clears throat> atrocious so i wouldn't recommend uh using my controller settings privacy settings there's literally nothing there it doesn't matter accessibility there is a couple things in here that are pretty crucial optic opacity you can put this lower if you want i personally think 100 is just fine i just use the smaller reticles so i can actually see what's going on around where i'm aiming and then the screen shake intensity you definitely want off okay because if you have this on an impact grenade an explosion anything that will blow up will shake your screen and it'll be much harder to actually fight back so turning this off is very very important because by default it's actually on so you might have it on right now and not even know for team colors i just use blue and red blue for my team red for the other now i do know a trick where you can turn your team color to red and turn the other team color to blue and if you turn the enemy's team color to blue apparently it's easier to see gadgets so like val cams uh drone lights things like that i find it's just fine on on red i find i can see them pretty well but the blue probably would stand out a bit more i know pro players like fox a do this and a couple others so if you're interested sure turn the other team to blue and see how it goes and that is it for my settings for year nine season one 2024 pox unlock settings uh let me know if you have any questions in the comments i'll be happy to answer them and uh, i hope this helped you out at least a little bit peace out